Good evening and thanks for joining us on Nationwide today. I am Elizabeth Omori. Now let's begin with security matters. President Mohamed Bukhari has held a crucial meeting with the members of the Security Committee of the Nigeria Governors Forum. The meeting held virtually in furtherance of his strategic engagement with critical stakeholders towards stemming the tide of insecurity in the country. State House correspondent Adamu Samba reports that Vice President Yemi Oshimbajo, the service chiefs, Inspector General of Police and heads of other security agencies participated at the meeting. Participants are expected to analyze the prevailing challenges of security, containment efforts and strategies for lasting solutions. The chairman of the North East Governors Forum and Governor Bruno State, Babagana Zulum, coordinated the meeting. It would be recalled that President Buhari had on Monday engaged the governors of the North Eastern states in matters of security. The president had given strong assurances that desired security and stability will be restored in parts of the country, bedeviled by acts of crime and criminality. He said new strategies have been adopted and state-of-the-art military hardware acquired towards reinvigorating the fight against terrorists and other criminal elements undermining national security. And still in security, the federal government's concern in the return of security stability in the Northeast is yielding unprecedented results owing to the breakthrough in the fight against Boko Haram terrorists and other threats factors in the region. Abubakar Usman Akwanga reports that Governor Inua Mohamed, Mohamedou Yaya is the latest to recognize the efforts of government during a cuts visit to the chief of the air staff. The visit was informed by some of the deliberate measures taken by the Nigerian Air Force to secure lives and property in Gombe State with the construction of Special Air Force Command as latest effort in fully restoring the people's confidence in the region. Governor Inua Muhammadu Yahya says the state government appreciates the crucial role played by the military in resecuring the northeast zone and announced the donation of 330 hectares of land for the immediate takeoff of the project. The very day the request got to us, we allocated 230 hectares of land, <laughs> which you may rarely find in some other states, but at least for us. Even today, we are ready to receive you, to give you a place to start work. Chief of the Air Staff, Air Marshal Sadiq Baba Abubakar, lost the efforts of Governor Inua Muhammadu Yahya and promised to work Force relentlessly years, in returning the Northeast region to its place of pride. He says more reinforcement is underway to complement efforts of Special Operation Command, Special Forces Unit, and aircraft anger in succeeding in the fight against insurgents and bandits terrorizing the zone. Nigeria is destined to be great and no individual or group of individuals can interfere with that process. The Nigerian Air Force working with other security agencies will work around the clock to ensure that the territorial integrity and national sovereignty of Nigeria is not undermined. The palace is aimed at improving strategic security partnership between the government of Gombe State and the Nigerian Air Force in entrenching a stable and peaceful atmosphere for the well-being and advancement of the people of Gombe State. In Abuja, Abubakar Usman Akwanga, NT News. Meanwhile, the Nigerian Army has reaffirmed its commitment to ensuring peace, stability, and general security of the country. Chief of Army Staff Lieutenant General Toko Brata stated this in a message at the opening of the Social Media Influencers Seminar on Civil Military Relations held in Oshobo, the Ocean State Capital. Joshua Ogunjide reports. It has become expedient for the Nigerian Army to seek better ways of getting its activities, especially the fight against insurgency and banditry reported in such a manner devoid of misinformation and fake news, especially on social media platforms. It is against this backdrop that the Army headquarters, in line with its military civil relations, gathered together what is called social media influencers at a seminar across Ocean State so as to bridge the gap in information dissemination. The chief of army staff who was represented at the seminar is not oblivious of the influence of the social media and the need to maximize the opportunity by training practitioners in addressing fake news. The quest to always want to break news has sometimes led to the dissemination of fake news with negative consequences for national security. 
The Nigerian army is making giant stretches and having the upper hand in dealing with the terrorists and the insurgents. But such efforts are always underreported. Oshun State Governor Boigari Tala declared open the seminar. I appeal to social media practitioners to uphold the code of journalism, which includes truth, balance, public trust, objectivity, impartiality, and abstain from fake news and unverified information which are capable of compromising the nation's security and interests. It is believed that the seminar will go a long way in curtailing the dissemination of fake news in the country. From Oshobo, Joshua Ogujide, NTA News. And the Emir of Kano, Al Haj Amino Adobayera, has lauded what he described as impressive progress recorded in the ongoing effort to address the spate of insecurity in Zanfra State. The monarch made the remark when he paid a cutsy visit to Governor Belu Mohammed at the government house. Halir Mohammed reports. Zamfara State Governor Bella Muhammad recalled the old system with nostalgia while receiving the Emir of Kanu Alaji Aminu Adu Bayeru. Alaji Bella Muhammad observed that as custodian of culture, norms, and values of the people, traditional rulers played a pivotal role in maintaining law and order, which paved way for the achievement of peace, tranquility, and harmonious coexistence in the society. He affirmed that reviving the lost glory of the traditional institution is the only panacea to the challenge. The Emir of Kanu Alhaj Aminu Adu Bayro said he was in Gusau to cement the existing cordial relationship between the Kanu Emirate, government and traditional rulers in Zamfara state. The monarch expressed delight with the restoration of relative peace in the state. At a point, if they ask somebody to leave Kanu to Zamfara or Sokoto, he finds it difficult to do that. But now, comfortably, with our eyes closed, we have passed through all these streets and we are here today, which testifies that things are getting back to normal. The Emir of Kanu Alaj Aminu Adu Bayaru also met with sole administrators of the 14 local government areas of Zamfara State, where he charged them to be prudent in the management of public funds to improve the well being of the people at the grassroots level. In Gusau, Halir Muhammad Umar. NTA News. This is Nationwide on NTA. Time now to join Dotun Ogunyemi in Lagos for some reports. Nice to see you, Dotun. Thank you, Elizabeth. The Lagos State Government and National Union of Petroleum and Natural Gas Workers have arrived at a compromise putting on hold the proposed strike by the union over certain agitations by tanker drivers. Lynn Lenike has details. The strike by tanker drivers was called off after the grievances presented to the Lagos state government by Nupeng were deliberated upon, resulting in the issuance of a communique signed by representatives of both parties. The compromise addressed the manifold of problems affecting the operations of tanker drivers in Lagos in recent times. We have issue with only the state government. The other states were working even yesterday, but today, if the Lagos, uh, the Lagos state tanker driver too, or, or, or the tanker driver in Lagos have been so, the, the, the tanker driver have been so lifted to us. The leadership of the state, among other things, promised to tackle the menace of area boys who outrightly ambushed tanker drivers, extorting illegal fees for business reasons. The state government also assured the tanker drivers that allegations of payment of multiple levies to security agents will be investigated with a view to eradicating the practice. Following the agreement, petrol tanker drivers have proceeded with other regular operations with a certainty that normalcy will prevail. In Lagos, Lynn Lenake, NTA News. To fortify the body against coronavirus, medical experts recommend a healthy diet to strengthen the immune system. This makes high protein a necessity. However, the poultry farmers in Nigeria are facing a crisis occasioned by fall in the supply of ingredients for animal feed. Imolia Yotokede has details. Maize, also known as corn, 
is a cereal grain and an excellent feed ingredient in the diets extensively used as an energy source, constituting about 70% of animal feeds. However, there is shortage in supply and a sharp increase in the price of maize in the market. The supply before 12,000, 12,000, my now 22,000 now. The thing they cost now, the thing they had us as a weed, they buy them now. If this persists, there is tendency for Nigerians to experience severe protein deficiency, leading to closure of more feed meals in the next few months. Investment in the sector has gone up, so the need for meals increased exponentially. So we were not able to meet this need. Three months ago, the price of maize was about 90,000 per metric ton. Today, it ranges between 160 to 180,000 per metric ton. That's a quantum leap. Feed millers are about to be increasing price with the pace of maize because this cost needs to be factored into factor of production. These practitioners are advocating that all options should be geared towards availability of maize pending the harvest of new ones in the last quarter of the year. If we are uh, looking at uh, the survival of the industry, the government must urgently do something now. It's either they release grains from the strategic grain reserve or find, give us a window you know, to get it made somehow. Otherwise, uh, we're going to run into trouble. Please, come to our aid. Don't let us ruin our investment. We are going to default the bank. There's going to be bankruptcy. The bank will not recover their loans. And so many things will happen if there's no immediate reaction now. The association emphasized that should the industry collapse as a result of the current crisis in the grain producing regions of the country, it could take between two to three years to resuscitate the supply chain. In Lagos, Imoli Ayotukidi, NTA News. And those are the stories from Lagos. Let's now rejoin Elizabeth for more reports on Nationwide. Thank you so much, Dr. Now to biosafety, pursuant to resolutions from the February 2020 Convention on Biological Diversity in Rome, Italy, ECOWAS is recommending inclusion of biosafety concerns of the region in the formulation of the post-2020 Global Biodiversity Framework. In a virtual consultative meeting at the instance of Niger's Minister of Environment, the federal government is articulating the African position hinged on human health and ecosystem resilience on Nge Fainfis reports. Global Biodiversity Framework pursues the vision of living in harmony with nature. This vision is guided by goals bordering on ecosystems, species and genetic diversity, contribution of nature to people and effective implementation of action plans. This is a key activity for them. This virtual consultation within the ECOWAS region is articulating inclusion of West Africa's peculiar environmental needs, like biodiversity loss, which contributes to insecurity plaguing member states in drafting of the global biodiversity framework. Environmental issues are not localized. What happened today in Nigeria can affect Ghana, can affect Liberia, can affect, uh, affect other countries, and, 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 and vice versa. So this consultation and collaboration will provide uh, a level playing ground for the countries to understand what uh, each other is doing. Action plans captured in the global framework include increasing natural ecosystems, preventing extinction of species, improving conservation status of nature, and maintaining genetic diversity. But well, we can take the ambitious road and work together as a sub-region to choose a different path which is a path of conservation, restoration, transformation, and sustainable use of our biodiversity. Conversations at the meeting also consider sufficient financial resources, capacity building, use of technology, and the political will for its implementation when formulated. In Abuja, Onengye, Fine Face, NTA News. Away from biosafety, the Kogi State Government has commended the Federal Government, Federal Ministry of Communications and Digital Economy for establishing an Information Technology Innovation Centre in the state, saying the initiative is in line with the readiness of the state to deploy ICT in addressing development gaps. 
a statement by the Commissioner for Information and Communications, Kingsley Fanwo, ahead of the virtual commissioning of the project by the Minister of Communication, Dr. Isa Pantami, indicates that Kogi has one of the most robust plans for the development of ICT in the country. And what the Ministry of Communications and Digital Economy has done is in line with the Kogi state policy to radically provoke ICT revolution in the state. The statement asks that Kogi state has its roadmap to achieving its ICT goals and the governor of the state believes that Kogi should grow into the ICT hub of the nation. The establishment of the Information Technology Innovation Center at the Kogi State University will help the untiring drive at ensuring that the state develops an incubation center for hatching some of the best ICT eggs in the nearest future. Away from ICT, the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development wishes to officially inform the general public that registration of BATC of NPAR has closed on Sunday 9th of August 2020. In a statement by the Ministry, the registration, which commenced on the 26th of June 2020, was initially scheduled to end on the 26th of July, but the Ministry extended the date by two weeks to avail those that were unable to do so apply. A total of 5,042,100 youths have applied as at the end of the exercise. The Minister, Sadia Omar Farouk, reassured Nigerians that due diligence will be applied during the next stages of the selection to ensure that only duly qualified applicants are enrolled. The Ministry will ensure that the applicants as well as the general public are kept fully informed on the progress of the scheme. The Minister further added that the NPAC program is aimed to provide Nigerian youths with opportunities to gain skills for employability and entrepreneurship, which will also go a long way in assisting the country towards the post-COVID-19 economic recovery. She noted that women and persons with disability will be prioritised during the selection. The Minister noted that her ministry remains committed to the vision of President Muhammad Buhari to lift 100 million Nigerians out of poverty in the next 10 years. You're watching Nationwide on NCA. Let's take a breather now. More reports ahead. Stay with us. ICPC and NTA say you can help Nigeria to flatten the curve on COVID-19, just as you can help flatten the curve on corruption. Follow transparency, accountability, and integrity just as you follow health guidelines. with integrity and maintain your distance from corruption just as you stay away from COVID-19 by maintaining social distance. Report every act of corruption to ICPC just as you report COVID-19 to NCDC. Stay away from corruption, stay safe from COVID-19. to ICPC on toll-free number 0800-2255-4272. This message is brought to you by ICPC and NTA. with us. Now let's talk COVID-19 updates. The NCDC has confirmed 290 new cases of COVID-19 in Nigeria. Of the new cases recorded, Lagos and Plata states have the highest number of new infections with 82 new cases each, followed by Oyo with 19, FCT 18, Edo 16, Kaduna 15, while Enugu and Ogun states have nine new cases each. Kano and Napquara have eight cases each, Cross River, Ondo and Rivers states, five new cases each, AK24, Emo three, 
what Bruno has two new cases. Nigeria now has 46,867 confirmed cases, out of which 33,346 have been successfully treated and discharged, while 950 deaths have been recorded. Meanwhile, Nigeria has received 200 ventilators from the United States. Uche Ugochuku, who witnessed the handover ceremony in Abuja, reports that the United States Agency for International Development presented the medical equipment on behalf of her government. In recognition of the need for global support and solidarity in the fight against coronavirus pandemic, the U.S. President Donald Trump had in April 2020, through a telephone conversation with President Mohamed Buhari, pledged to support Nigeria in her struggle to defeat the disease. This donation is therefore in fulfillment of that promise. The United States understands and has always understood as a leader in international health that diseases cannot only be treated in one country, that it must be a worldwide cooperative endeavor. And that's why we're assisting other nations even as we are working on the, on the, the problem at home ourselves. The ventilators are particularly useful and these ones that we have received here are very modern in that you can grade, you can grade the pressure and it is electronically controlled. Yes, so the use of ventilators and oxygen will reduce mortality. It is also expected to help in managing the 12,571 active cases of COVID-19 currently in the country and anticipated infections. The need for the U.S. to throw more support in the global efforts to develop vaccines and treatments for COVID-19 was stressed. Uche Ugochuhu, NTA News. And in other news, the Imo State House of Assembly has debunked the rumors making the rounds that the Assembly mace was used by a faction of the Edo State House of Assembly to impeach the Speaker, Frank Okie. Chairman Committee on Information, Imo State House of Assembly, made this known while briefing newsmen in Owiri. Beatrice Anyam reports. Recently, the social media was awash with the report of the impeachment of the Speaker of Edo State House of Assembly, Frank Okie, by a group of 17 lawmakers of the House during an emergency plenary at an undisclosed location in Benin City. This was greeted with another rumor that the mess used by the factional 17 Edo lawmakers was that of Imo State House of Assembly. The Chairman, House Committee on Information, Imo State House of Assembly, Dominic Ezerion says the rumor is unfounded as the mess is in the custody of the Speaker Chiji Collins. The Imo State House of Assembly maze being taken to the House of Assembly in Edo State is a complete falsehood and a method of destroying the government of Imo State. The perpetrators are not just playing a role of evil but playing a role of no conscience. The House Committee Chairman on Information says the House will unravel its source. In a way, Petrus Anyam, NTA News. For more reports on Nationwide, let's head to Benin, where Agatha will be our guide. Hello, Agatha. Elizabeth, thank you for joining us in Benin. The campaign team of the All Progressives Congress, the APC, is in Edo Central Senatorial District to sell the Simple Agenda Manifesto to the people. Now, this is just as the People's Democratic Party, PDP, concluded campaign tour of Asako Central local government area. The APC campaign team first stopped at Igweben, where the candidate told the people that he is passionate about even development in the state. Government must partner with you to make your business better. Whether on a small trade or on a small weather, government will patronize you, government will work with you. At the palace of the Onoji of Igweben, His Royal Highness Ehizoji Elu Ojirio, Pastor Izeyamu and his running mate were presented to all Onoji in Asan land, where prayers were offered for them. The team proceeded to Ubiaja, where the candidate promised the youth's employment. We need to put this here that we employ our youths. As we develop Ubiaja, we develop Ubiaja people. In Urumi, they were warmly received. Meanwhile, in conclusion of its campaign in Isako Central, the PDP visited Udaba community. The candidate, Konogodino Baseki, unfolded plans for the people as contained in his manifesto, Make Edo Great Again. The road 
Where you come from, Osobebe? Go, Agbabu. Go, go, Udoti. I want that road. Could I go get that road? It was observed that social distancing guideline was not adhered to and only a few supporters had the face mask on. Away from politics, schools have resumed for graduating classes in Edo State and students are adapting to the new normal. Adobe Jojigba monitored the situation in Benin Metropolis. The federal government had announced reopening of schools for exit classes to enable them prepare for the external examinations. Edo State did not join in the reopening on the said date as the state government rescheduled reopening on 10th of August to enable the state to put modalities in place to accommodate the new normal in education activities. MTA crew visited some schools in the metropolis on the resumption day. As you can see now, I'm wearing face masks. Those are the guidelines that the school put in place for us. Like the uh, wash, before I go to the school, I washed my hands. And when we start, I'll be start out with social distance in the class. The use of thermometer to check students we are put in place. And before we could allow, we could be allowed to enter the class, we had to wash our hands first, then we were given sanitizers. All this time, the mission education went around to ensure that all these are put in place. We have a sick bill. The safety measures are in line with government directive to contain spread of COVID-19, even as exit classes reopen for external examinations. In Benin, Adubeji Ojegba, NTA News. That's it from here. Elizabeth, it's back to you. Thank you, Agatha. Now to education. Students in exit classes in rural schools in Yoba State said learning via radio and online tutorials have helped in preparing them for the forthcoming final examination in the face of COVID-19 pandemic. Correspondent Ladi Bala, who monitored school resumption in some local areas, reports that the state government has made arrangements to safeguard the health status of returned students. Schools and teaching have resumed for students of exiting classes in Yobe State. When NTN News visited some of the schools, students were seen ready and excited about resumption after a long stay at home. They applauded the online and radio classes introduced by the Yobe State Ministry for Basic and Secondary School Education. I'm ready for the final examination. And I'm very glad I want to thank the government for ensuring this great opportunity given to us to finish our examination. In some of the local government areas of Yobe State, adequate arrangements have been made by school authorities to ensure that students adhere strictly to the protocol of COVID-19 in the course of learning. State Commissioner for Basic and Secondary Education, Mohammed Sani Idris, who expressed optimism over the readiness of students, said Yobe State government is committed to restoring the lost glory of education. As far as what the ministry, you know, the government is supposed to do, we, are, we have actually done it. We have even done it in, in excess. We are hoping that that will translate into good performance. In Damatru, Ladibala, NTA News. Time now to join Abdullahi Mohammed in our Kaduna studio for more reports. Hello, Abdullahi. Good to see you. Elizabeth, and thanks for joining us here in Kaduna. Schools reopened for exit classes. The Gazi Governor Mohammed Badr Abu Bakr has warned that any school that fails to comply with the COVID-19 safety protocols will be closed down. The Governor was speaking during an assessment visit to some of the schools. Let's now join our Mohammed Kazori for details of this report. The last state has ordered the resumption of schools with 40 schools at the first instance. For now, all schools have been reopened with strict observance of COVID-19 protocols as directed by the Presidential Task Force to sustain the campaign against the spread of the disease. Governor Mohammed Badaru Abubakar inspected schools in Duse and Kiawa local government areas where he asked school administrators to ensure compliance to safety measures put in place. There is adequate social distancing and uh, all the uh, children are being provided by the government all with uh, uh, all the safety face marks that they need 
you can see the buckets and the soaps that are for washing hands and uh, the teachers have taught them uh, more and more on uh, personal hygiene and uh, safety based on COVID-19 uh, protocol. The governor is very much concerned that uh, all the protective measures are supposed to be put on ground and he will go around and check to see by himself that yes, what he has instructed to be done has been done. NTA News observed that the state has made provision of face masks, sanitizers and students are seated according to physical distance regulations. From Dus A, Awal Muhammad Kazouri, NTA News. So there are about 27,464 final year students across Kano State have resumed academic activities in full compliance with COVID-19 protocols. Elizabeth Aye Lamido reports that teaching and learning have commenced in earnest at most of the school's visitors. Let's join her for details of this report. Following the reopening of secondary schools by the federal government to enable exit students to write their final examination, about 538 schools comprising of both public and privately owned have resumed academic activities after four months of shutdown. A visit to some of the schools shows the level of commitment put in place to ensure compliance with COVID-19 safety protocols. I feel very happy that we are back in school and I'm well prepared for my work. I come with all my with, with all my confidence to write my exam. I'm really happy because um, we're finally back to school. Some of the school principals also spoke. We have a hall that can contain about six to seven hundred students. We will put only two hundred students for the purpose of this examination, so that there will be enough ventilation, there will be enough social distancing. Apart from that, we are giving us all these sanitizers, two sanitizers. The State Commissioner of Education, Mohamed Salusi Iru, summed up the process of the preparedness. We have communicated all the schools, we directed all principals to make sure they have an emergency isolation room. With the West African examination fast approaching, Kano State Government has left no stone unturned in preparing the students for the coming exams and taking measures that will guard them against the novel coronavirus. In Kano, Elizabeth Yelala Milo, NTA News. And that report from Kano ends a contribution from here. It's back to Elizabeth in Abuja for continuation of National Elizabeth. Thank you so much, Abdullahi. If you just joined us, this is Nationwide on NCA. Let's take a break. More reports ahead. Stay with us. You can follow us on all our social media platforms. Facebook at NCA Network News. Instagram at NCA Network. Twitter at NCA News Now. YouTube at NCA News Online. Or visit www.nta.ng. For live streaming, visit www.nta.ng. Now, you can stay updated on the go. Be it on your TV, iPhone, laptop, or iPad, or download the NTA mobile application from your Play Store or App Store. NTA, you can beat the rich. <laughs> she cries. She cries in anguish and in pain. She bears the scourge of her grief. She toils in vain for justice and succumbs to silence. He gloats over his malady. Like a beast, he pounces with no remorse. Her cry means nothing. Her pain feeds her shame. Like an orphan, she's left to grieve in solitude. But no more will she cry in vain. Her adversaries will henceforth be at the brunt of their cruelty. Rape is evil. Rape is a plague. A pandemic of monumental consequences. We must unite and kick it out of our society. Connect with NTA and stand against rape and rapist. This message is brought to you by the Nigerian Television Authority, NTA. Glad to know you're still there. Now, Asmao in Sokoto has the next set of reports for us. Hello, Asmao.
Elizabeth, good afternoon and welcome to Sokoto. Schools in Zamfara State have reopened with teachers and students engaged in revision ahead of the forthcoming senior secondary school certificate examinations. Halil Muhammad Umar, who visited some schools in Busau, reports that the resumption brought excitement to both teachers and students. The return of teachers and students to schools in Zamfara State followed the recent directive by the federal government for the reopening of exit classes to enable the exiting students prepare for their final examinations in line with the COVID-19 protocols. A visit to some schools within Guso Metropolis indicates that most teachers and students have returned to their respective schools and ready for the tax ahead, while few orders are yet to resume. NTA News, however, observed that while private schools have complied with the safety guidelines against COVID-19 as directed by the government, public schools, on the other hand, are yet to comply with the directive. I feel very happy and I'm so excited that we came back to school. I'm prepared 100% because I've been reading at home. Teachers on their part have engaged the students in revision ahead of the forthcoming WIAC examinations. From now to the exam day, we, are, we impact, we try to train and coach our students on what to write in the examination. We are going to pass all what they did. It could be recalled that the state government had assured of providing necessary preventive materials against the COVID-19 in all its schools. In Gusau, Haliru Muhammad Umar, NTA News. Sokoto State is far left behind in federal appointments, infrastructure development, and federal presence. Governor Amin Waziru Tambol made the disclosure when he received an courtesy call the Federal Commissioner of Federal Character. Federal Character Commission in charge of Sokoto Office, Abdullahi Aminu Tafida. The latter Abdullahi has the report. The Federal Character Commission was established by law in 1996 with the primary mandate of ensuring equity in the distribution of socioeconomic amenities and infrastructural facilities across the country. The Commission is also charged with the responsibility of formulating guidelines to monitor other projects and the programs executed by government ministries, departments, and agencies at the added mandate. Due attention is, however, required on this critical mandate to further promote equitable distribution of, of infrastructural development, particularly to the states that have not been receiving equal treatments. I will from time to time, sir, seek appointment with you, with your excellency, to discuss these areas of cooperation with the federal authorities and as far as the mandate of the federal character allows. While saying that FCC is in a better position to harmoniously work with the federal and the state governments to ensure equity and fairness in the affairs of governance, Governor Amin Wazir Tambol said his administration has established a full-fledged ministry for careers and security services in the state. The so-called state will be left far behind, especially in federal appointments, in infrastructural development and federal presence. It is hoped that the narratives on the very low public perception on the activities of the FCC would be changed for the better. In Sokoto, Lalat Abdullahi, NTA News. And that's it from Sokoto. Elizabeth, it's back to you. Thank you so much. Let's now shift attention to safety on the road. The Federal Road Safety Corps in Ogun State has impounded 65 articulated vehicles under the aegis of Operation Scorpion 2 as part of efforts to discourage reckless driving and stop carnages on the nation's highways. Despite concerted efforts by concerned agencies, especially the Federal Road Safety Corps, to cop carnages caused by drivers of articulated vehicles, their apparent recklessness still accounts for a good number of deaths recorded on roads. World Health Organization describes Nigeria as the most dangerous country in Africa, with 33.7 deaths through road accidents per 100,000 population every year. This implies that one in every four deaths recorded through road accidents in Africa occurs in Nigeria. Statistics also shows that between year 2018 and 2019, 28,000 195 persons lost their lives to accidents involving articulated vehicles with unlatched containers. There is significant progress on the level of the uh, enforcement. You know, we arrest these containers that are not properly secured. 
And when we arrest them, definitely we will not raise them until the proper thing is done. That is, they are, the containers are properly secured. Six errant drivers were apprehended in the course of the operation, and the FRSC boss says they will be prosecuted accordingly. Now, the National Transport Commission Bill seeks to regulate only the economic aspects of the transport sector to create an enabling environment for private sector investment, which will stimulate productivity and competition. For this reason, experts in Good Morning Nigeria strongly urge the president to assent to it to herald needed development in the sector. Ikemini Williams reports. A bit skeptical about aspects of the bill. Transport consultant Mani Ochubuju says the National Transport Commission bill is a brilliant idea which can yield positive dividends in the transport sector if it is well implemented. However, he says there are structural and institutional deformities that must be addressed. It has some very, very threatening aspects to it, even threatens the authority of the Minister for Transport. You have regulatory capture. You have lack of capacity, you have lack of resources, lack of finance, lack of uh, uh, independence. Tomorrow, you go and touch one big transport line, it's a problem. Let's fix the road, let's fix the railway. Those are key issues that we need to keep in mind. And even the waterways, let's make them work. Not just have waterways of 10,000 kilometers that we don't even use at all. Other guests on the program, including sponsor of the bill, Senator Abdul Fatai Buhari, insist on the target of the bill, which is to address economic challenges of the sector and not to witch hunt. The law is not meant for a particular minister. It's meant for that ministry. The best practice for the country, the way it is done in, uh, in, other, in other countries. And we are not, uh, like we said, the aspect of the NTC is the economic regulator. We know the way we are in this country. You must make things a bit ash so that people will say, hey, there is punishment. When an investor wants to come, the first thing he has to do is the law guiding that sector. Mm -hmm. If the law guiding that sector is not investor friendly, he, kicks, he gets out. And then who loses? Mm -hmm. Some of us believe very strongly that the day we allow private sector investment in rail, for instance, mm -hmm. in rail, for instance, we will have a more efficient rail sector. It revolves around reform in the transportation sector. After the privatization, there is no economic regulator in the sector. NPA became the landlord, which is the owner of the ports that were concessioned to private entities. So you need an arbiter. The Shippers Council will be the interim regulatory agency upon signing of the bill. Nigerians are encouraged to sound a continuous alarm for efficiency and accountability and to speak up in any case of deviation. In Abuja, Ekemini Williams, NTA News. Away from transportation, in view of the present realities of the coronavirus pandemic, the slated 2020 National Festival of Arts, Culture, scheduled to hold in just the Plata State Capital in October, has been postponed till a later date. Gofan Sharjah reports that this was announced at a stakeholders' virtual technical meeting held at the National Council for Arts and Culture headquarters in Abuja. <laughs> The National Festival of Arts and Culture, NAFEST, is an annual event aimed at deepening national unity and showcasing Nigeria's rich cultural heritage. The 33rd edition is slated to hold in just the Plateau State Capital and stakeholders from the arts and culture sector drawn from the 36 states and the FCT are present at this webinar to discuss modalities of staging NAFEST in line with COVID-19 protocols. However, there were concerns about the hosting of the fiesta this October as earlier scheduled. Commissioner for Tourism, Culture and Hospitality, Plateau State, Tam Wakat Welly, indicated the state's readiness to play host to participate in states sometime in December. In view of the reality, we are constrained to adjust the time to December. This is to enable us to perfect all logistic arrangements while observing developments in respect of the fight for the eradication of the COVID-19 pandemic. 
The stakeholders, however, appealed to the Plateau State Government to host the festival in November to allow for more participation. So it is important that we agree on a date before December. In the spirit of the COVID-19 protocol, some events, particularly uh, traditional wrestling, will be replaced. That's why we're introducing the drive-in theater, so that we don't have to crowd the DG also said that NAFEST is not only possible in an era of the pandemic, but the festival can be made even more unique and entertaining while observing all the COVID-19 guidelines. In Abuja, Gufan Shaji, NTN News. For Nigeria to remain one indivisible nation free of tribal and religious sentiments, broadcast media organizations in the country must emulate the Nigerian Television Authority by communicating hope to the people. This was the view of the Akwaibom State Commissioner for Information and Strategy during a familiarization visit to NTA Uyo Clement Barikui reports. The influential power of television broadcasting is possible through the use of sight and sound to communicate its content to the people, and the NTA has effectively utilized these attributes to tell the Nigerian story from its true perspective. A Kwaibom State Commissioner for Information and Strategy, Inyobong Ememobong, who is visiting NTO a few days after being sworn in, aligned completely with the strategic role of NTA in information management in the country. What NTA does is to the benefit of our Kwame State government to project what the citizenry and the government are doing. Therefore, NTA depends on a Kwame State government. A Kwame State government depends on NTA. So it's a critical marriage. General Manager of NTO, Yo, Mr. Ohiz Aigboje, said the visit has created a new opportunity for deeper engagement between NTA and the Kwame State government. His Excellency has done a lot. But these achievements are not properly and widely uh, disseminated. If you want this information to get to the majority of Nigerians, NTA, the largest television network in Africa, <laughs> with the widest coverage, you can't do without us. A former independent presenter on NTO, Yo, the new Commissioner for Information and Strategy, hopes to strengthen existing relationship between the authority and a Kwaibom state government. In Uyo, Clement Barakui, NTA News. Indeed, I concur. We lead, others follow. Moving on, as part of its economic empowerment drive, the Future Short Initiative of the First Lady, Hajia Aisha Buhari, has reached out to farmers in Jigawa State, contributing 70 water pumping machines to boost their agricultural productivity. Howell Mohammed Kazari reports. Future Assured Program is an initiative of the First Lady Hajia Aisha Buhari as a non-governmental organization set with the aim of advocating and supporting the well-being of women and children in particular. The program focuses on three broad areas of health, education and economic empowerment. The wife of the President Hajia Aisha Buhari, represented by Dr. Zainab Abdurrahman, said the program is to support farmers to increase production and reduce poverty, especially in rural areas. She said youth as the future of the country need to engage in productive ventures. This COVID, we have been trying to cushion the effects of the lockdown. So Future Assured is an all-rounder. Governor Mohammed Badaru Abubakar, represented by the Special Advisor on Political Matters, Aminu Kanta, says the state government is proud to be associated with Future Assured Program as it is improving the living standard of the people. From Duse Awal Mohammed Kazauri, NTA News. To science and technology now, the need to encourage women and girls to pursue careers in ICT for a more dynamic technology sector create employment opportunities and ensure gender equality was the rationale behind African Scholars Care Initiative's desire to partner and train 100 girls in ICT for youth inclusion. Minister of State for Science and Technology, Mohamed Abdullahi, who inaugurated the project, emphasized the ministry's resolve to work with agencies to promote gender equality in accordance with Sustainable Development Goal Number 5. Justin Bemoy reports. One most significant challenge facing largely the developing countries, statistics reveal, is a rising youth unemployment rate. This informs the theme of this year's International Youth Day, Youth Engagement for Global Action.
In response to these emerging issues, the African Scholars Care Initiative, in partnership with Digital Skills Foundation France, is to induct and train 100 girls in ICT in line with 2030 SDG Goal 5, which is geared towards gender equality and women and girls empowerment. We intend to engage these girls on the following programs. Computer appreciation, including cyber security, Graphic designs, illustration, digital marketing, mobile banking. Everywhere you go, you find out that the guys are more ICT savvy. So we need to ensure that the girls compete favorably. Inaugurating the project, which will be a six weeks intensive training of the first batch, Minister of State for Science and Technology, Mohamed Abdullahi, viewed that the current situation has brought to fore the important role digital technology is playing to mitigate the impact of COVID-19 on youths and social interaction across societies. Women accounting for less than 20% of ICT expertise in Africa. This gap needs to be closed by encouraging young girls and women to embrace education through advocacy and sensitization of teachers, parents of society, and workshops and trainings like this. Aside the training project, a sensitization centered on the need for a resilient youth in the era of COVID-19 and beyond will be conducted. Justin Bemuni, NTA News. Into issues of concern, a State Action Plan Committee adopts United Nations templates to end gender-based violence and promote peace has begun work with the inauguration by the Nasara State Government. From Lafia Aliu Tijani oh. Mohammed reports. The UN Action Plan Against Gender-Based Violence has action aid and other NGOs championing the initiative as Nasara joins 11 other states. We are willing to continue to work with the state government to ensure that every woman, every girl in Nasarawa state is liberated from the influence and effect of violent extremism and, incre and increase you know, sustainable development. The UNSRCR 1325 was a landmark resolution which affirmed the important role of women in prevention and resolution of conflict. Governor Abdullah Isule says, all forms of crime against women and children must stop. He says the state government will give adequate support to the committee to succeed as he urged stakeholders to support the campaign. In Lafia, Aliu Tijan Mohamed, NTA News. And out to sports, fans look forward to UEFA Champions League quarterfinals. Tamara Ibiwe will be our guide on sports updates.